Hey, what's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video. And today we are taking a closer look at the craziest webcam of 2022, the Nexigo Iris, which claims to have the largest sensor on a webcam ever. Well guys, I've tested many webcams this year and this webcam seems to be really special because it even has an HDMI port. So I will just guide you a little bit through the specifications because this sounds absolutely crazy. Well, we have a super huge sensor. This sensor is bigger than the sensor used in the iPhone 13. Then also it's AI powered, so it has plenty of features. You can control that all with um, the remote control, which is included. Of course, um, audio is really important on a webcam, especially if you use it as a business webcam. Now, if you're a pro streamer, you mostly have an external microphone, but if you use it to record conferences or calls, or even podcast, not podcasts like, you know, um, video interviews, then it's really nice to have good sound. Now, um, this webcam has dual mics. We'll test out the sound later in this video as well. It has an OSD menu. You can co control all of that with the remote control. You don't need any extra software, which, you know, is a bit complicated. If you have something set up on your home setup, you switch the computer, then this is um, going to be complicated because you have to download the drivers, the software, and then just reconfigure it at all. But this one here has an inbuilt memory. That means the settings of the webcam, like how you like it, are actually stored inside of the webcam. This is a really fantastic feature. It also has an uncompressed output. For instance, if you have some capture cards, you want to have, for some reason, the image of the webcam, it has an HDMI out. So you can have just a capture card, connect the HDMI cable and just grab it and use it for something else, which is also pretty amazing. And last but not least, it has picture in picture. For instance, if you want to do some screen record and you have your face cam, then you can also do picture in picture with other things. And yeah, I would say, um, Let's just quickly open it up and let's check it out because I'm really excited to try it out. Alrighty guys, here it is. Now this is the package. Um, you can find also more information on the link down below if you want to buy it. Now it is Zoom certified. Now a lot of people since um, the pandemic use Zoom and it won an CS award. And yeah, um, it's from Mexico. Then let's open it up, let's check it out. First of all, here we have the manual um, inside of this package right over here. Then the first thing is the remote control. Now the remote control, as you can see, looks kind of like a Fire Stick or a TV remote control. Um, it is powered by AAA batteries. And yeah, let's have a closer look at the webcam. So here we have the webcam and it is huge as you can see. So let's take it out. And guys, there we go. Here's the webcam. 4K AI powered, so it also has plenty of AI features inside. Now, a really stable clip to attach it to the monitor or even here a tripod mount if you want to. Now, um, it has five volts input, one amp. It's completely powered by the USB 3.0 port and also a HDMI out for capture cards, as I've mentioned before. And well, look at this huge sensor. It's really big. So that's a huge lens in here. Actually, it's just a lens because you cannot see the sensor. Then here probably we have the holes for um, the microphones, as you can see here on the right, here on the left. And yeah, that's basically the webcam, but of course you have some accessories with it. So everything you need to attach it to the computer. Now here's a pretty long USB 3.0 cable, as you can see, and there is also a Type-C adapter. So many people nowadays, they use small business notebooks or MacBooks or whatever. So you can just attach this to the USB port and then plug it into your computer with a USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt port or whatever. Now something I forgot to mention because I took it off is this slidable lid, as you can see. So that's kind of a privacy shield if you don't want um, that the webcam could be somehow turned on, you know, you just close it and it's fine. And also it's a protection for this huge lens as well. Yeah, let's try it out on my notebook because for me personally, this is an amazing webcam if you're streaming on the go, if you have some conferences, because then I don't need to take my huge camera. I just take my small portable laptop and laptops have usually really bad webcams, but this one here um, is really nice even to put it on a tripod. But we'll now just try it out how it works even on a laptop screen. And there we go. So even on a small notebook screen, as you can see like this, it fits, of course, better on a big monitor. Or if you have a very fragile, you know, um, low profile notebook, then it's better to put it on a tripod. All right, so now we have to connect it. Um, I really want to see if it can be actually powered by the USB um, C port. So let's give it a try. Now it's attached to my laptop. Now we attach it here to the camera and we have the red light over here. So there's a little LED which tells you if it's on or not. And it got detected already. That's fine. And now let's try it out to turn it on. 
with the remote control. All right, guys, so we're trying it now out in OBS and I just checked um, the settings of the camera. Now, first of all, there is no delay and it's virtually really smooth. And we can check out here the settings. So it got detected without any software, without any drivers, which is really convenient. Um, then I'm currently um, recording this here in um, 4K. But in 4K, you're limited to 30 FPS, but that's not something bad. Actually, all of the webcams I had, they can only do 4K in 30, and most of them couldn't even do proper 4K. Now, um, in full HD, you can do actually 60 frames per second, so especially if you're streaming on Twitch and you want a smoother image, you can actually go to full HD, which is perfectly fine for a um, face cam and switch to 60 frames. All right, then let's switch back here to um, full screen because I want to quickly show you um, what you can do with the remote control. Now, on the remote control, you have several buttons. Now, first of all, um, this one here, this is the auto framing. Let's say I move out of the picture then the webcam, as you can see, follows me, which is pretty cool. For instance, if you're streaming and you're moving a lot or you do some streams where you show something which is not necessary to be on the screen, this webcam will actually track you. And the tracking works really well. So if I go out here, it even zooms in because it detects that I'm actually smaller in the picture. Now, what we can also try is I will quickly stand up and then we can check out if it even tracks me when I walk around here. So um, I'm leaving now. And that's pretty cool. It even kind of adjusts through um, AI cropping the angle because it's looking actually up. But look at this, it's pretty amazing. It even follows me in the room. And this is in this room, it's pretty difficult because there are plenty of lights right over here. So we have lights here, which is difficult and right over here, but it can track me even though there is a little bit difficult lighting situations with light in the background. And that's pretty amazing. I'm, I'm stunned how good this works. So um, that's the auto framing, as you can see. Then um, we have another button right over here. Let's check this one out. I think that's the target lock. Yes, okay, so the auto framing is off. Then we have here a zoom. So if you want to zoom in, and even here it works with the tracking. That's pretty amazing. And with this button, you can actually zoom out. And um, here we have a home menu. So here we can see currently firmware version, firmware date, HDMI resolution, um, 4K 30. So you can also have um, uncompressed 4K output um, over HDMI. So if you want to have really the maximum quality this camera can do, you can also grab it from the HDMI signal. So here we're now in the main menu. Um, if you press those three bars here on the remote control, and if you now press that home button right over here and you hold it a little bit, you get here to the setup menu. So here you have different video styles as we can see. So there is meeting mode and let's see what else is there. Um, streaming mode, okay, that seems to be um, with a lot of focus on the face and the brighter picture. Then let's check out what we have, low light mode. So um, we'll test it out at night later here because it's currently day. And yeah, the meeting mode which is kind of natural but not so much focused on the face. And that's looking pretty good. So other than that, let's check out what we have here. We have mic audio. So you can switch on or off the microphone and you can also adjust the microphone gain. Then you can also flip the on-screen display menu just in case you just mount it different or the screen is mounted different and some other things right over here. Um, let's check out the onboard AI settings because I think that's the most interesting thing. So here we can adjust the auto framing. Basically you can adjust here the sensitivity. So um, currently it was on low but we can also set it to for instance high and probably it will start then tracking me much earlier so let's leave the menu here then here we have the onboard ai so here we can also adjust the ai features for instance for the auto framing or the auto tracking um, you actually um, can adjust the sensitivity so it was at low um, i switch it now to high so it's following you a little bit more uh, more sensitive and there's also facial enhancement so let's turn this on and as you can see it changes here in the picture a lot um, the exposure in the face so if it's off your face much darker if it's on um, the brightness in your face um, is going to be much better because it detects your face and um, boosts the brightness here in the face area then um, exposure settings it's currently on auto so of course you have all those adjustments you can do even also um, in OBS even um, if the lights flicker you can switch here between 50 Hertz and 60 Hertz or you can just leave this off and many other things right over here 
Of course, you can also adjust the colors, as you can see. So different white balance, red tone, blue tone. So there is a lot of things to adjust. Probably most of the people will adjust this just once here in the camera. It gets saved in the camera and you will never touch it again. Well, guys, it's time for a 4K quality test on the Nexico Iris. And I'm using Streamlabs desktop right now. I set it to 4K output um, of the webcam and also 4K output of the recording right now. So um, this is as wide as the camera can get. And this is pretty amazing because it just shows my whole room. Now, for me, a camera cannot be wide enough, but I read that some people um, actually were concerned it's too wide, it shows too much, but actually you can just zoom in on the webcam. Um, as you can see, there's plus and minus, so this is for the zoom and goes up to a 10x zoom. Now because it has a big sensor and it has 4K, it can actually crop in without um, having a lot of loss, which is pretty cool. So if you don't want to show like, for instance, the mess here on the right side, I can just zoom in and hide it, which is pretty amazing. Then there's this picture-in-picture -picture mode, um, which I also just found out what it is doing because I was like, what is picture-in-picture? -picture? Why do you need picture-in-picture -picture on webcam? But it's a pretty cool feature because you can have the wide view and then you can have a close-up view um, with tracking functionality. And there you can actually show some things a little bit closer or you can actually have a closer um, look at your face. And um, it works in real time and it is doing the job quite good. All right, um, then let's talk a little bit about um, the exposure. So um, in my room, there are plenty of lights as you did already see. And um, currently the sun outside is quite strong. I opened up the blinds to show you that this webcam is dealing quite good with different lighting situations. I have a light right over here for my face, as you can probably tell. And um, here in the background, there are also lights and here are lights from the window. I have some webcams that really blow out the picture if there are so many light sources or they have issues um, with the exposure, with the skin tones, with the face light. But the Nexigo Iris is handling it quite well, even in automatic settings. But just to tweak it, I use a lot of manual settings, which I can quickly show you. So in the setup, as I've told you, you can switch um, the zoom level. This is something I want to mention because um, by default it's set, I think, to 5x. If you want to have 10x, you just go in here and you change it to 10x zoom. And also I'm using most of the time the streaming mode. I think for me personally, this gives me the best results for using it as um, a streaming face cam. We also have the onboard AI features with um, the tracking functionality. So here you can switch the tracking on. And the tracking works also extremely well. If I move around the image, as you can see, um, it just tracks me. You can also adjust the sensitivity. Um, this is actually the auto framing. And then you also have the auto tracking, which you can turn on and where this camera really can track where you go. Also, even if I lean back here, so it's really cool. Oh. <laughs> All right, um, that's regarding the AI features, which are built in. Of course, you can also turn them on or off with just one press on the remote control. So let's go back here. If I just press this button, as you can see, it goes to auto framing on or auto framing off and then have the wide view again. All right, um, then let's go back here to the exposure settings. So I'm currently having it in brightness priority. This is my go-to feature because here I can set manually the brightness. There's also shutter priority where you can adjust the shutter, the ISO, just like on a professional camera. But for me personally, I get the best results here in brightness priority. And there's also flicker reduction if you have some lights that flicker. Regarding color, it has so many different white balance modes, but I like to keep it in auto. Of course, you can even tweak the auto settings, but I, right now in this image, also just keep it in auto. It's doing the job quite well. Um, as I've shown you before, there's also, um, for instance, um, a manual mode and a calibration mode where you can just use a sheet of paper or white wall to calibrate um, the white balance. But most of the people, I think they will just keep it in auto mode and the auto um, white balance is doing quite good. So you can also adjust here the sensitivity. If you don't want that it changes so fast, if you have some lights that change a little bit, you can also set it to low here. All right. Um, then we have some image settings also right over here. Currently, um, I have everything on default. I just played a little bit around with the sharpness. You can resharpen up to 15. Um, I like to keep it a little bit more sharpened um, because um, if you just turn this down, as you can see, it's very soft. But my sweet spot was something like around 10, I'd say. Then we have also HDR. Um, we have a low light mode, which you can also trigger by um, one press on the remote control. And yeah, 
Then we have the noise reduction, also didn't touch that at all. There's 2D and 3D noise reduction. Um, plenty of features in there to, to, to play around, but I think personally for me, um, those features at default are doing a really good job already. HDMI I'm not using yet. I have it connected to a second monitor to monitor, so this is really fine, but I don't have any 4K grabber, so I can't really show you something. Of course, I could use a 1080p grabber, but then it's downscaled again, and there is not much sense of doing that. Anyhow, um, this is the image quality of the Nexigo Iris in 4K. Let me know what you think about it. I think it's, it is really good, also with um, the zoom in, the crops, the tracking functionality. And what I was really impressed with is how it handles exposure. Of course, I did some manual settings, but tweaking that um, is just perfect for me. And it's really a good replacement for using professional camera, which is huge on the tripod as a face cam, because the image quality is really, really good. Alrighty guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and this was the Nexigo Iris. Now personally, I think it's a very interesting webcam, especially for people that, for instance, travel, record at different locations, but also as a stationary webcam. Now, the benefit is that it has this onboard memory that has those presets, so you just set it up now. Um, you've seen you can adjust so many things. Now, for me, um, product should be simple, so you just plug it in and it works. Of course, here it's a little bit more complicated with those presets, but once you find the preset you really like, um, it's amazing because you just plug it in on any computer you want and you just press the button for the preset and it's how you like it. And that's something that's really unique on this webcam. Of course, the HDMI output can also be useful. Now, for me personally, um, I will use it with the computer, so um, it's not something I necessarily need. But I do see that for some people this can be very, very useful. Microphone quality, low light quality, huge sensor, all amazing things. Um, the webcam quality is also good as you've seen in the video and you can check out everything about this product also down below in the description and also the actual price of the product. Now um, the only thing that um, where I see room for improvement is maybe that plastic cover right over here. Now I'm not really sure if this is not a pre-production sample so I think on the final version this could be definitely better but as you can see um, it's a little bit loose but other than that it's really amazing build quality also from the connections and yeah um, also from the mount. Alrighty guys um, so big thanks for watching this video until here. As always if you have any questions write them down below in the comments and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. So I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'm signing out. Goodbye.